Relationships. It's difficult to truly change one's heart for Christ without investing in them. Pastor Doug Boquist likes to call forming relationships the ministry of hanging around. Today he shares the meaning behind that ministry. Here's Andy and Pastor Doug. Joined once again by Pastor Doug Boquist from Lima Community Church. Been here in the Lima area four years now? Four years. Four yeah. years. And one of the things that's impressed me, I've seen you seen your church, but I've seen your games, I've seen you on the fields, I've seen you in the community, I've seen you in the hallways at Lima Senior. You're around, and you're around people, and you're getting to know people. Uh, one of the things you, you said once was, if I'm in church more than 50% of my time, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be out. And that, that's really a big philosophy in the way you do ministry. Yeah, yeah. In fact, when the board hired us, they said to me, Pastor, if you're in the office half the time, something's mm -hmm. wrong. You know, we, we want you to help us get into the community. Um, a number of people call this a number of different things. Uh, uh, somebody much smarter than I wrote a book called The Ministry of Presence. I, I call it the ministry of hanging around. <laughs> you just hang around people, yeah. you know, and uh, you become their friends. Uh, and they're, they're not projects. They're not uh, targets. You, you just love them and you serve them. And in time, um, you may get the opportunity because of the relationship that's been built. They share things that are, are close to their heart and you share things that are close to yours. Years ago, uh, you know, I was schooled in, in various evangelism, evangelism uh, tactics. One of them was the four spiritual laws in which you would go up to a stranger and, and ask, you know, what their destiny would be in eternity should they die tonight. Um, and People are in heaven tonight because of that. Uh, and some people still use that effectively. Uh, but more and more, uh, I think our society is populated with, with folks that feel like to have in-depth spiritual conversations, you have to earn the right. Mm -hmm. they, they really want to see who you are. They want to know your heart. One of the things I think about is... Uh, we have two eyes and one mouth. We have two ears and one mouth. We have two hands and one mouth. We've got two feet and one mouth. We've got two nostrils and one mouth. But for too long, all of the, all of the emphasis on uh, sharing our faith has been with our mouths. Mm -hmm. um, but as the saying says, when it's all said and done, there's often more said. People need a living demonstration of the love of Christ the unconditional regard and acceptance and grace that he gives. A good friend of mine says, uh, love people, wait for pain. <laughs> you know, if you love people, uh, you listen to them, you earn the right. In time, they will share with you and you might be able to, to bring the Prince of Peace to bear to where their, their soul is, is troubled. So, um, you know, one of our philosophies of ministry is to be in the world, but not of the world, as Jesus prayed in, in uh, John 17. In the 1920s, there was uh, kind of a breakup of, of evangelicals. Uh, one group uh, went the way of, of uh, social justice, feeding the poor, clothing the naked, um, you know, working in, in, in compassionate ministries. The other group went highly um, evangelistic in terms of services and in, in, in terms of just communication mm -hmm. uh, of the gospel and not the demonstration. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because I think it's both. Right. Um, I, think, I don't think anybody would argue that the church we love is not the influence in our culture that it once was. Mm. And I'm sure there's many factors for that, but one of which I, I'm, I'm convinced is this, we stopped serving. Hmm. We stopped loving. Yeah. You know, um, I, I've been invited into the hallways, in the classrooms, in the ball fields uh, as a pastor, which some people are very surprised, but I go to serve. Yeah. Uh, you do too. <laughs> I love what you do, Andy. I, I absolutely love what you do. I'm so proud of you. Um, but 
but when when Christians just love people without an agenda, you know, without being the moral policeman, you know, when we do this, doors close. When we do this, how can we serve? Doors open. At the end of the day, people want to be loved. And uh, when they see in a, in a follower of Christ somebody who loves without counting costs, somebody who serves without the thought of what am I getting back, mm -hmm. they do more than hear the presentation of the gospel. They see it. Um, there are an awful lot of believers who really don't have unbelieving friends. Mm -hmm. Because it's safe, you know, and, and in fact, the statistics are rather dire uh, in the 90 percent of, of people who have been a believer for more than two years. We obviously still know uh, people who don't share their faith. But in terms of the, the intimacy and the fellowship, that's all reserved for the Christian friends. And um, I don't think that's the way Jesus did it. You know, um, Matthew records the, the story. Jesus went from town to town, village to village, uh, teaching, healing. And it says he was moved with compassion mm. because they seemed to be like sheep without a shepherd. And the word there, moved with compassion, really, uh, uh, the compassion word there has to do with, with the bowels. Uh, uh, it, it means his stomach gripped wow. it, it, he had a clench in it. i mean it was a it was a physical response it it, it, it hurt him to see their pain yeah. uh and so he did very practical things mm -hmm. you know in, in fact he tells us uh we can do a number of things that don't require theological training or <laughs> or words at all if i was hungry i was hungry and you fed me i was yeah. thirsty and you gave me a drink i was sick and you looked after me i was in prison and you visited me um i was a stranger and you invited me in well anybody can do that whether you're a ceo with a phd or whether you're you know illiterate in in a third world we can all do those things and those are all practical ways in which we love i call it the ministry of hanging around just love mm -hmm. people yeah. and see what the lord does yeah but we want to judge people Mm, that's his job. We love him. Right. Well, hopefully that gives you some insight as you think about just people right around you right now, family members, neighbors, people at work, children that you know that could use some encouragement, that you could hang around, that you could be there for now and there for in the future as well. Give it some thought. Give it some prayer. God will lead you to those people that need to be loved. Thanks, Doc, uh, Dr. Boquist, Doc, Pastor Doug Boquist yeah. here at Lima Coon You're Church. welcome. Thank <laughs> you.